Welcome back, folks. I was planning on taking you into the garden for episode five of season four. This is not season four. This is a special mini series I'm bringing to you guys because summer's here. Everyone's contacting me about saving water, saving heat going into the summer. And the three big contenders in my mind for DIY LED in 2017 are the Quantum Boards, the Vero 29 Gen 7s, and the chilled grow lights chilled boards so today i'm going to be covering the 175 watt chilled grow lights.com chilled boards later I'll, I'll cover the quantum boards and then we'll go into vero 29s crease luminous citizen it's all great it's still great but these are the ones i want to focus here for summer 2017. now the way these chill boards are set up they have four separate channels that's four positives and four negatives all the positives are on the left all the negatives are on the right and it's broken up into two white channels, a red and a blue. So I want to go through this and kind of explain some of the voltages and drive currents. Now, the way Chilled is rolling out their commercial fixture line, the pre-assembled, they're rolling everything out at 1,050 milliamps. That's how you get the 175 watts by Goman 1050. Now, you can go 500, you can go 700, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but I don't want to make the video 30 minutes long. So we'll just cover this drive current and we'll go through it like this. Now. The two white channels of the Samsung LM series white diode, same ones in the quantum boards, are running at 46 volts per channel, and there's two of those. So if you add that up, that's 92 volts worth of white, 27 volts worth of blue and UV, and then 47 volts of red. It actually comes out a little closer to like 165 volts. I made a little Sharpie typo here, so please excuse that. Now, you do have the option of going to Chill Grow Lights and buying their complete kit which includes the driver, the heat sink, and all that stuff, and it just would turn on. Like you would wire all four channels in series at 165 volts, you'd plug in the driver, you'd have a set spectrum, and you'd be good to go. And those are running like 350 or $370 for that full, like it ends up being 200 watts because of driver losses. So you're welcome to do that. Go over to Chilled and check that out, you know, before they sell out of pre-orders or whatever, it just, it happens. So. Uh, Go check that out. But for the people that are interested in going a little more into the DIY, maybe trying some light recipes and uh, splitting up these channels, I want to go into a little more detail on how it works because I think a lot of people were confused by like the 160 some odd volts. So the way this works out, I've got this kind of pre-wired here. And the way I'm going to do this is set it up on three different drivers. So we'll have a single large driver for both white channels, one red driver and one blue driver. Now. I just grabbed what I had on hand, so don't uh, pay too much attention to the specific drivers. These are actually 700 milliamp drivers, just for demonstration purposes, but I just needed to do, to do something to get it you know, kind of up and rolling. So the way I have this working, I have these little PLD meanwhile drivers, and they're set up to each of the blue and the red channels, um, and the, the voltage on these drivers is like 50 some odd volts, so it has no problem running both channels. And then the larger driver, I'm running both white channels in series together. That way I have a single positive and a single negative, and I'm gonna go into slightly more detail on that here in about 30 seconds. So right now the way I have it wired, it's just the positive on the left side of the board and the negative on the right side of the board for the red, plugged into one, same with the blue, and then obviously the whites. So I'm gonna plug it in and just kind of show you how these diodes look and talk about the relative power or the relative kind of photon output of each of the separate channels so that you can get a spectrum that matches your needs. Okay, so if you're doing the quick math and you're running 1,050 milliamp drive current, which is what's suggested, what's recommended, you just take the voltage of the channel and multiply it by one. So for example, the blue channel, 27 volts, you multiply that by 1.05, you're getting about 27 watts worth of blue. Now here I'm running it about 17 watts at that lower current. Now it's more expensive to run at 700, 700 milliamps or 500 because you get less total wattage, but you get a little bit more efficiency. So for the demonstration purposes, you can see the blues are on, they're running pretty good amount of blue and it's got some UVA right there in the middle on the blue channel. Um, nice high nanometer UVA, so you don't have to worry about irritating your plants by running that UV for the full 12 hours. Red, same thing. It's about 46 volts, 47 volts for the red. So that's about 47 watts of red. A lot of red. A lot of people ask me about adding monos to their cob builds and stuff like that. If you're going to go down that route, you might consider just adding a single chilled board to your cob build. And I mean, shit, you're going to get 50 watts worth of red and save you a lot of soldering of little mono stars, etc. 
You go to plug in the whites. Whites running about 92 volts for both channels together in series gives you about 92 watts. So I'm coming up with 120 watts out of the 175 maximum possible at the 700 milliamps. Now, Vitaly over at Chilled is being very conservative. He has a bunch of integrating sphere lab data, but he's being very conservative with that, with that data because there are some variables. This clear cover for IP ratings so he can sell it to commercial greenhouses and stuff actually cuts down on quite a bit of light. You're losing about 6%, maybe 7% total pho photon output for this waterproof ability. So for me, for my personal build in my grow room, I'll probably end up removing the cover. I don't foliar spray too much, and uh, I just want that light. Now later, when he introduces the, uh, the glare-free uh, anti-reflective coating, you'll gain back that 6%. But for now, leave them on if you're foliar spraying a lot, or take them off if you're uh, like a photon hog like me you want the maximum efficiency so he's publishing around 2.3 micromoles per joule at the 1050 and at 700 you're getting about 2.5 so still probably the most impressive numbers i'm seeing right now in 2017 um, there are some ways to kind of tweak it and and maybe get a little closer to like that 2.7 um, but again tentative numbers and uh, i'm sure he'll publish all the lab numbers when everything is set in stone now i was recently out there He's got all the diodes, all the components. He's just going into assembly right now, placing LEDs on PCBs, etc. So like I alluded to before, I want to talk to you about how to wire both of these white channels on a single board together because I don't see any value in like controlling the two, the left white and the right white together. So if we look back to the way we use cobs, up here at the top of your screen, you see two 36 volt cobs. And the way those are wired in series is the driver positive comes out, goes into the first cob, it's negative comes out and goes into the second cobs positive just like i'm showing here you kind of connect them together that's series i know a lot of you guys know this stuff but we have new people joining the channel every day and the green arrows uh they they notate the uh the flow of dc current so out of the driver positive through the the series chain of two cobs and back into the driver and in this configuration the voltage is additive so 36 volt cob plus 36 is 72. You can treat the chilled boards the exact same way. Just imagine these two yellow strips of white diodes as two cobs. They have two positives and two negatives. And if you take the negative coming out of one and attach it to the positive going into the other, like you can see with this little orange connector, you essentially create a series connection of a single white channel with one positive and one negative. Now again, you have to add those voltages and the voltage is about 46 volts. So that's how you come out with the 92 volts, which actually makes things a lot easier when you're talking about combining multiple boards for your configuration with a single driver. Now the whole purpose of this video is to kind of explain how you can have that, that control of the red and the blue and the white separately, but it does require you require you to use three drivers which is kind of consistent with what we've been talking about in season four with light recipes and stuff i think a lot of people are, are trying to get into this and keep it simple and if that's the case just go into the chilled website order their kit it turns on and off and that's it but for the people that are a little more advanced i know a lot of you guys have, are knocking out your third fourth fifth sixth build so if you're trying to get more advanced and get some spectral control this is the way i would do it and in a moment here, I've created a little chart. I've gone full analog because I want to get these videos out quickly and efficiently to you guys. Uh, I've created just a little chart on a piece of paper with a magic marker explaining some of the different driver options. And maybe you can use something you got laying around the house. Now, the first driver I'm, I'm going to be talking about, they're all going to be the HLG series because I want to talk about dimmable capable drivers. But if you stick around to the very end of the video, I've got a budget driver setup for a single board I'm going to talk about. Now, as we talk about the HLG 120, and these are all 1050 milliamp, it's a decent fit. It runs five blue channels, but you're probably not going to have five boards. It runs three red channels. So if you have a three board configuration, the HLG120 is a great choice for the red channel only. Now, if you bump up to the 185, 1050, seven blue channels, again, probably too much for the blue, but it runs four red, which is great for your four board configurations. Uh, it will also run two full boards of white, meaning it's got 190 volts so it runs two full boards so if you're doing a two full, two board config like i'm showing here the single heat sink with two boards on it check out that 185 hlg at 1050 and it's just going to run all the whites 
all the whites only for two boards. So really good choice for that. Really good utilization of the voltage with a few volts left behind. You're running at maximum driver efficiency, um, assuming you're running 220 volts, which is always recommended for LED drivers. Now, as we bump up into the HLG240, which is actually like a 250 watt capable driver, you got 238 volts. And it's an okay fit, but it runs odd numbers. So if you're running five boards or something, uh, it's worth considering, but I'm just gonna gloss over it for now. What I do wanna concentrate on is the HLG320. Now, when you bump up into an HLG320, if you run it at 220 volts, it is the maximum driver efficiency in the range. All the newer uh, 320, 480, 600s are a little more efficient than their smaller counterparts at the higher voltage. And it just fits really nice with three board setups. So if you got a double and a single or three singles, um, it's going to run all your whites in series on three boards. And it's going to probably be my go-to choice. Obviously, I've purchased one and I have one here in the background. So, uh, And I've got three boards. So uh, hooray. If you're doing some linear setups, uh, whether the heat sinks are... are uh, in one linear deal like this, or maybe turned at 90 degrees to cover more area, three full boards of white and your money. Now, I wanna go into some of the uh, the drivers that are a little bit more on the budget friendly side. Now you're gonna sacrifice a little bit of control and a little bit of a dimming function, but what you will have is separate plugs so that you can at least time these things differently. Like if you want the blues to come on at a certain time and the reds, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but before we go into, well, yeah, let's go into it right now. Um, Another driver option is the ELG series from Meanwell. It's very similar to the HLG. It's a little cheaper. They're about 35 bucks and they are dimmable. You'll notice the B at the end um, on my little spreadsheet here. It can handle a minimum of 48 volts all the way up to 95. So it's gonna be a great option for you. Let's say you ran the HLG 320 that I mentioned for three white boards, white channels of the boards, this would want to run the three blue sections. So this would be a good driver for that. Or if you're doing a two board config, this will run your um, uh, two of your reds or one white board. So if you can see here in the chart, the ELG 100 1050 is a really flexible driver at 35 bucks that, that you can fit into red, blue, or white. Now, as you go cheaper, you lose your dimmability. So the LPC 35 1050, which is in green here. It's an $8 driver, and it's perfect just for turning your blues on or off, but it's not dimmable, unfortunately. But it has the perfect amount of voltage to just run that blue channel, and for eight bucks, you can't beat it. Last one on the list is the LPC60-1050. It's a $15 driver with 48 volts, and it runs the red channel on a single board absolutely perfectly. So this whole setup would run you 58 bucks for the ELG and the two LPCs. You can get them from onlinecomponents.com. Obviously, you're welcome to use Grow Mouse at Rapid if they've got this stuff, um, which I don't think they do, but they might have the ELG. Uh, Probably should have checked that before I voiced over the video. But anyway, uh, 58 bucks, you could do a single board with that combination and you'll be in great shape. I can't believe I just did this whole voiceover in a single take. It's your pal, Grow Mouse, the one take wonder, signing off on the chilled video, but I'm trying to serve them up hot, fresh, and fast for you guys. Special shout out to Green Gene. Check out our tech talk from last week. We talked all about the Vero 29 Gen 7. It really inspired me to get some in the lab aka my dining room so check back next week folks we're going to get into the qbs then we'll talk about veros and hey if there's any time we can talk about korean luminous and citizen later on but uh that's it for now have a great mother's day and i'll see you guys tonight at the round table urban remo is going to be on it's going to be a dope show <laughs>